Hey guys, how are you? It's Alan here from Looking for Warriors, and I want to talk about. Um, we're talking about classical agile learning today. And we're, let me close this window, please. Uh, we'll get a better microphone, which I haven't got right now, and but I'm going to order one. So I'm sure we'll have one in a couple of weeks. I've ordered other things that I needed, but the microphone was probably more important. So, I but I will or the microphone so I imagine the sound quality in this is going to get better and better and better every time you listen to it anyway talk about classical agile learning and what I want to talk about today is structure what do you do how do you do classical agile learning with your kids and the whole point of classical agile learning is that you do it with your kids it's not so if you're not prepared to do any work just turn off this video don't watch it if you're like, I don't want to do any work on this, um, how do I do this, how do I outsource this? This can't be outsourced. You can't outsource this to the government, you can't outsource it to a teacher, you can't outsource it to anybody. You can probably outsource to a teacher, possibly. Um, but I think the ideal situation is, because it's about connection. It's about connection. And it's about the dad and child connection. So really you should do it yourself and it's not that difficult it's not that difficult and it's not that time consuming what I'm asking in the beginning and this is what I'm doing and I'll do more that's fine and you'll probably find yourself doing more and more as you go along and you get into it and you get start to enjoy it and your kids start to enjoy it but at the start you want to do 20 minutes tops 20 minutes a week so what I'm saying is sit down on the weekend when your kids aren't, when you're not working, the kids, your kids aren't in school, and spend 20 minutes doing class, classical agile learning, and that's all. That's all you do. If you do more, now the whole point. If you do more, they're going to get bored of it. You give them a taste and see how they like it, and so you don't, you don't try to quench their thirst with a fire hose that burrows at first. Particularly if they're just getting used to it, you know, you're giving them fresh water for the first time. They've been drinking coke and all, you know, sugary crap for years. And if you if you think about DNA and you get your DNA gets instructions from your parents, and even Jesus says the sins of the father and um, go on to the son. It, it's, what he's just saying there is that you know there's something in your DNA, so you remember, you remember what your parents. If your parents have been eating crap all their life, there's a chance you might get diabetes. That's just what he's saying there. And so if you think that people, as far as education, have been eating crap for, you know, drinking crap for 20 years, or, no, sorry, not 20 years, generations, you know, 10 generations, we've had this crap you know, crap in our water, uh, we're drinking coke and sugary crap and all this kind of thing. So it's so when you give someone some fresh, clean water, which is really what they should be drinking, and it's good for them. At first, they're not going to like the taste. <clears throat> it's just the way it is. It's going to taste a bit weird. It tastes a bit plain at first because you haven't got all that crap in, in that you're used to. So what I'm saying with classical agile learning is exactly the same. You don't, you want to just give them a small glass of water, let them taste that, and then give them another small glass of water next week and let them taste that. So what I'm saying is do 20 minutes. 20 minutes is easy for you and it's easy on them too. So what you want to do first is, we well, you got to set up a board. And the board is really important. I'll show up, I'll, I'll, I probably won't at first, but when you're watching this video, there may be an image of a board thrown up, because I've got my own board done up. Um, I went to a local print shop and got a whiteboard for 20 euro. And I'm sure you can get the same or you can get them online. I'll have a look where, I'm sure they're on Amazon for less than 20 euro. So I'll have a link into Amazon where you can get a whiteboard if, if you want to get it from Amazon. Um, but it's, so you can get a board for 20 euro. Now, you can stick that board in the wall. If you have space, if it's in your house, you may not want to do it. But the other option is real-time board, which they're the only two I'm gonna recommend. There's loads of other places, but I only wanna recommend things that will actually work. And I know real-time board will work, and there's a cost in real-time board. 
it is um, free for the first month. First 30 days is free. And then after that, it's 10 euro a month. Now, or $10 a month or 10 pounds, whatever you happen to be. Now, I think 10, this doesn't go to me, it goes to real time board. But it's a good bit of software and I, I think it's you do need some kind of board. So if you're not going to use a whiteboard that you can buy for 20 euro and you can buy some. And it depends on who you are. Because some people, they need a whiteboard in front of them. The whole point of the board is that you can see every week what you're supposed to be doing straight away. And you're not spending time trying to work out, okay, what are we doing now? That's And you can plan. You can plan what you're going to do the next week and the week after. That's the point of the board. So... You do need some sort of board. You cannot do this without a board. Now, you can use a software board or a hard physical board and stick it on your wall. But you do need some kind of whiteboard. A real-time board is 10 euro a month, and it is, it's great. Now, it's not built for this. It's built for software developing. But the whole Agile systems come from software developing anyway. And so you've got to have some sort of board. So I'm asking you, would you invest 10 euro a month into your child's education now, if you can't do it or 20 euro for a whiteboard and a space on the wall to put it up if you can't do that okay fair enough but to do this you need to be able to invest a small amount of money and also to also invest your time 20 minutes a week that's what I'm asking you to do so that's it you need to get a whiteboard software or a hard physical one now what you do then is we pick a number of subjects or topics not, not subjects topics that we're interested in now I am not you and I don't know you I don't know anything about you I'm Irish I'm white I'm Celtic um, I come from the Irish tradition now, that could be you you could be exactly the same as that I don't know um, but it also may not be you may be like um, from Pakistan you may be living in England you may be living in America you may be black you may be living in the Bronx very different experience from my experience but that's the whole point the point of a classical agile learning is not to teach your kids what I want them to know it's to teach your kids what you feel they should know now there's some universals there's some universals I think property rights are universals I think things like um, political systems are universals that they should know and should understand I think being able to um, use the court system is pretty much universal your kids need to understand the court system and how to use it and my kids need to understand it might be a different court system maybe I, my kids need to know the Irish one maybe your kids need to know a different one I don't know but there's some universals but also I want your kids to understand your history who you are and who they are I think that's really important and I want to talk just five minutes about why I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? I am doing this because I believe your kids are the saviors we're waiting for. I think your kids are going to solve all the problems in the world. But they can't do it alone. They can't do it. They can't do it without the proper training and without being able to think. Your kids have been sent here to save humanity. And I'm not joking about that. I'm not joking. You want to listen to Jordan Peterson about what happens in gulags and what happens in Nazi Germany. And it happens very easily. And I'm not joking. I believe your kids are here to solve all the problems in the world, and so are mine. But we have got to do our part by training them how to think. So that's why I'm doing it. I think this is, is, the, is the one thing that's going to change the course of humanity. We're in a time now everything's been handed to us everything has been handed to us and we don't know how to use anything we've been handed the starship you know if you can imagine Star Wars and you know some some robots come down they hand us this unbelievable starship and we get in and we watch we watch uh, some guy, well, <laughs> we let our kids watch some guy playing Minecraft on it we, sit, we leave it on the ground where it could save there's a war on it could save humanity and we bring our kids in and say, okay, watch some guy playing Minecraft, which is fine. They should sometimes watch some guys playing Minecraft, but spend 20 minutes teaching them how to think. You know, give them that. 20 minutes a week. Many minutes you have in your week, I'm not gonna work it out, but it's a lot. It's more than 20. <laughs> so I'm just saying that 
this is really, really important. And it's important for your kids, and it's important for your kids. In, in this world, you need to know how to think. There's a lot of people who want to mess you up. A lot of people. And a lot of people want your kids not to be able to think. And the whole education system is built around that, stopping them thinking. So it's your job to... You don't even have to teach them how to think. They know how to think. You just have to show them, give them some tools and... Like, they know how... When your kids are born, they, they have a desire to get up and learn how to walk and move around. Now, if there was a system that made them sit down and watch, just watch TV and never walk... They may never learn how to walk. If it, if it was the whole system was was built around that, stop them learning how to walk and run. But they want to learn how to run, walk and run. And the only thing you need to do is is bring them out every now and again to a field and say, "Come on, let's play a game of football." Something they're enjoying and they're going to learn how to walk and run. But so, what do you need to do? First thing you need you need to get your board and you need to pick some subjects. So that's all. That's all we're going to talk about today. Getting your board and picking some subjects. Or sorry, not subjects, topics. So on my board I have, these are some topics, and these are just a selection of topics that I've put onto my board. Brehan Laws. I want my kids to know about Brehan Laws. I want, this is, your kids probably don't need to know this, or maybe they do, I don't know, but Brehan Laws is an amazing system in, in Celtic Ireland that, that was, was basically a anarchist system. And I think my kids need to understand it and how it worked. There was no government. There was high kings, but they, they, the high kings played the part of, let's say, eBay would play today in resolving disputes. So if I buy something from eBay and someone doesn't, I send the money and someone doesn't send me the item, um, I can go to eBay to resolve the dispute. Now, eBay don't send a bunch of guys with guns down to that person's house. Um, it's basically just, you know, they can't trade on eBay again if, if they don't send it out or bad reviews or they get a bad review. It's as simple as that. Um, it's more of a um, it's more of a, a system where, where you know you're just kept out of the economic system if you don't keep your word simple as that so you, you there's no government needed in that case um, and there's only a only something happens if there's a complaint anyway that's the brown laws that's one thing that I want to understand um, what is property rights I think that's really important I think that's pretty much important for everybody I think you know, understand what property rights is property rights is what's made the West the West right now um, so what is property rights one thing we're dealing with now which this, you could spend like months just dealing with this one thing and it sounds really simple when I say it it's going to sound really simple but you could spend months just going through this what is truth and how do I know what is truth and how do I know when I read something how do I know if it's true or not this is so important today because there's so many people who want to just fool people and you know when something's in the newspaper you got to understand that if something goes into the newspaper the journalist who wrote the story has their own point of view to put into that story the person who so the journalist then then the editor takes a look at that story and he he um, puts his own slant in the story then as well and both the journalist and the editor, they're also thinking about, the journalist is thinking about what the editor might think and also what advertisers might think. The editor is also thinking about what advertisers might think. Advertisers get their own point of saying um, just certain things are just unadvertiser friendly that they won't run. So advertisers have their own slant that they're putting on the paper too. And also um, the person who owns the newspaper has his own slant. There's some things you just won't run with. So, uh, once, when you're reading a story there's so much propaganda that's gone into that from so many different people um, and there's also some pressure from you know some things you won't run because oh my god if I run this you know social media is going to go crazy or you know all that kind of thing so there's a lot of things that just won't run if, because of those kind of things so you got to realise and all that is important and what slant is put on the story so you got to understand that the um, when you put when, when you're reading something in the newspaper all this has gone into it even bef before you even get to read it. And then when you're reading it, your own slant has been put on that story from your own mind. So, the item that happened, there's just so much propaganda and slants that have gone into the, uh, the item that's happened by the time you, you get to read it. And you're even putting your own slant on it while you're reading it. So, what is truth? 
and how do I know what is true and how do I know if something is true that's something that is um, is something to consider as well when you are so and you could you could do your kids could do three or four weeks on just what is truth so now maybe you don't maybe I would personally I would go and find some videos for them to look at like maybe Stefan Molyneux has some good information he's a philo- philosopher who's of today you may find something there now you could probably find something with Socrates or something like that but I just think someone like Stefan Molyneux will, will boil it down a lot easier and he has a book called On Truth Tyranny of, Tyranny, Tyranny of Illusion but um, I would just check those kind of sources that you could provide some simple sources that your kids would understand or maybe you just want to search on YouTube what is truth for kids now another thing just the last thing is I'll have to finish this video now the other thing they need to know I think all kids need to know this how to draw they need to know how to write they need to know what grammar is in writing what a adjective adverb noun kids don't know that coming out of school they need to know that stuff it's really important good communication in business and in life in general is really important but they need to know how to draw. And the reason they need to know how to draw is, and it's so easy to learn now how to draw. It's all over YouTube. They need to know how to draw because drawing is just another kind of communication. So you need to make sure that they learn how to draw. You don't need to know how to draw to teach them. You just bring them to, you learn with them. You learn together how to draw. So you can find it all over YouTube. We were doing that drawing people. I was doing that with my kids um, the other day. and. The, my nine nine year old and six year old did brilliant. Did brilliant from going if if I'd asked him to draw a person, he would have drawn a stick figure. He went through this YouTube video, fifteen minute YouTube video. They they could draw brilliant. And you've got to do it a number of times so so that they they, they learn the techniques and it, it gets into their long term memory. This has been Alan here from Looking for Warriors and I want to just bring you through the beginning of Agile Learning, what's the first items that you need to do?